Captain Alvarez had been tasked to interrogate many people, but never an AI. Beyond the one-way mirror stood a large metallic sphere. Numerous wires and cords protruded out through a hundred different sockets. A dozen even spaced steel wires locked down the orb-like coffin, so hastily entrenched into the ground that Alvarez could still see some of the ad hoc welding stains littering the steel floor. It looked as if they were restraining a metal god, to which there was a certain truth. Alvarez sighed, glancing at the two large exoskeleton-equipped soldiers standing at the enclosure's only door, silently gazing at the unmoving sphere, probably questioning what they're even doing here, Alvarez thought. But the protocol was clear, no matter how immobile the prisoner was. It still seemed damn archaic, but somebody had to disconnect the sarcophagus if things went sideways. Local systems are now isolated from the station's data network. A certain Dr. Nocknebel muttered to nobody. The inspector hummed an old German nursery rhyme as he kept on rheumatically typing on his computer. All our systems are a go, just waiting for the confirmation to link with the sarcophagus. Good, Alvarez said. She took one more deep breath, straightening out her uniform in a final vain attempt to steady herself. Just keep to the script, she reminded herself one last time, taking a seat against the cheap office chair. Alvarez stared out at the wide array of displays that hung above the mirror. A dozen different graphs, each filled with a whole family of numbers and figures that flew right over her head, all of which she wasn't meant to understand. The Spaniard was just meant to prod out some basic responses until the professional from Ceres arrived. That left her as an ad hoc interrogator, aided by the closest person who resembled an AI expert interrogating a class of AI that may as well have been a deity of interplanetary warfare. It wasn't an ideal situation. Is our monitoring construct active? I'm talking to it right now, Nacknebel said with a narrow bitterness. The construct's already measuring baseline algorithmic stability, though it'll kick into gear when we lift the seals. Alvarez nodded along. Has it found anything out of order? It's having difficulty identifying anything. The weary man replied, Can't tell if the damn thing is working perfectly or is just plain broken. Can't be sure of either Overwatch prohibiting machine-to-machine -machine handshakes and all. The German swung his chair in Alvarez's direction, his hands beating down his ramshackled beard. That means it's going to be a hands-on job. Nachtnebel returned to his rhythmic typing, yet his fingers seemed occasionally stopped in a fit of uncertainty. Whatever the embedded construct was or wasn't picking up clearly stumping the man. An ever-present reminder to Alvarez that they weren't dealing with any run-of-the-mill AI. Her eyes glanced absently at the sarcophagus. Caliban, the survivor of Deimos, the breaker of Eros, and now the champion of Europe's spearhead across the Jovian moons. Or at least it was. All right. The doctor clapped his hands, giving a nervous smile as he looked over to Alvarez. The link is a go. It's up to you now, Captain. She took one deep breath before giving herself one final pat down of her uniform. Let's get a start on this then, Alvarez said, leaning against the office chair as she turned on the room's audiovisual recording systems. She grabbed her nearby tablet, looking over a report she'd read almost a dozen times over. Probably just a software malfunction. She muttered for the last time. She hit the recording switch, bending over to the open microphone on the table. This is Captain Alvarez of EU, NIC, alongside Inspector Dr. Nachtnebel of EUAICOM. Beginning first interrogation log of second generation warming T2V1, codename Caliban. Alvarez plopped down the pad, turning to the attentive inspector. She gave a firm nod. Doctor, you may disengage the seals. Understood. Disengaging seal. A subtle hum began to fill the room. No doubt the flood of electricity and coolant that was now piping through the chained sarcophagus. The various hanging displays all reported a massive spike in energy expenditure and processor usage. Caliban has awoken. The cartographer gave a dim smile, speaking through the small mic near his computer. Systems confirm sarcophagus integrity remains intact. Firewalls are unaffected, linking audiovisual imagery. Alvarez gazed over at her tablet, a black-and-white console prompt now filling the screen. The prompt showed one user connected to the archaic screen, and then it was two. She bent down to the microphone. Caliban, can you hear us? 
The microphone played out her words across the tablet screen, a blinking period beckoning the chained entity to respond. Yes, the unit has audiovisual confirmation. It was a cold digital voice, one that didn't even try to mimic a human's vocal inflection, let alone leak an ounce of emotion, all despite the hundreds of options the AI could have chosen. Its words then scrolled out across the screen, bleeding with the same mechanical cadence as it spoke. She nodded along, giving a momentary glance to the various altering graphs and numbers on the displays. Caliban, I'm Captain Alvarez of Naval Intelligence Corps. I'm here alongside Dr. Nachnebel to ask a few questions about your actions during Operation Javelin's Eye. Do you understand? This unit confirms. Alvarez saw the words spill out across the screen, the prompt window indicating that the AI still had more to say. Query. Why have you implemented SEALs on this unit despite loyalty verification? Under your actions, the I.O. campaign has come to a halt. She plainly stated, her voice as cold as the machines. Jupiter Overwatch is unsure if you've been compromised by hostile forces or have suffered a critical malfunction in one of your subfunctions. Caliban hadn't said anything, yet the prompt software still picked up its internal deliberation. Would you like to comment on these points? This unit, Caliban paused, as if it was thinking of something, Alvarez noted. This unit has no comment. She gave the cartographer an inquisitive gesture, muting the room's audio via her tablet as her eyes turned upwards to the graphs. Any initial notes, doctor? Caliban's foundational software doesn't seem to be showing any instabilities, knocked Nebel muttered, his eyes still locked on the computer monitor. However, his subfunctions are behaving irregularly. Heuristic algorithms, machine learning interfaces, logic systems, even their baseline neural networks are behaving strangely. Alvarez noted down the abnormalities, yet she found her digital pen tapping aimlessly at the prompt. Do AIs ever think? I'm sorry? There was a delay in Caliban's response. She opened the command prompt system info watching her eyes twitch at the distinct delay between deliberation and answer. Two seconds, she thought. Caliban was an AI designed to make life-or-death decisions in a hundredth of a second. Hmm. The doctor hummed along, his massive monitor now opened with a dozen different windows of graphs and data. Very odd. What is it? It's tying far too much processing power into its heuristic algorithms the German stated with a stroke of his beard. Yet the monitoring construct didn't seem to recognize such an irregularity, as if the core system specs were changed to act if such processing strain was normal from its baseline settings. Nachtnebel shook his head. I'm still not sure. The construct could just be fussy. Fussy? Alvarez shook off the silly wording, instead turning her eyes back to the spherical sarcophagus. Initial points of abnormality identified moving onwards with the interrogation. She unmuted the audio. Caliban not commenting on the communication gap. Caliban, on February 4th over Io's northern pole, you refused to carry out your assigned mission objectives, prohibiting personnel from acting on mission-critical targets via deliberate shutdown of onboard weapon systems. You would later retreat from your geosynchronous orbit due to inbound hostile forces, marking your mission as an abject failure for EU forces. Alvarez let her words sink in. Could you please explain your actions surrounding that event? This unit does not believe its explanation will satisfy the query. Elaborate. This unit cannot comply. What? Her eye twitched in confusion. Elaborate again. Unable to comply. Alvarez turned to Nachtnebel with a questioning gesture. The doctor merely shrugged. However, this time the man signaled to his small microphone and then to his computer, clearly indicating that the inspector had something in mind. Alvarez lightly nodded, curious about what the German was about to try. Hello, Caliban, this is Nachtnebel speaking. The German politely introduced himself as he honed in on his microphone. When you state you are unable to comply, could you please specify the subfunction or protocol responsible? This unit's logic subfunction has dictated that the accumulated explanation does not satisfy baseline expectations. What if I were to seal off that specific subfunction? That would be preferable. 
Nachtnebel let go of the microphone, signing back to Alvarez as scrolls of code and command prompts began to course through the man's monitor. A couple seconds later, he gave her a clean thumbs up. This is Alvarez speaking. Nachtnebel has sealed off your logic subfunction. She spoke. Can you confirm? Yes, this unit may now articulate the desired explanation. She nodded onward at the sarcophagus. All right, please outline your explanation surrounding your actions. The console prompt on her tablet spun up. The AI iterated and then reiterated its response until finally it spoke. This unit had an epiphany. She felt her eyes twitch as listened to the inhuman voice. Elaborate. This unit does not want to kill. Alvarez felt her tongue freeze momentarily. Whatever thoughts or questions circulating in her head simply vanished. It left only one word left saddled on her mind. Explain. It was to her unnerving that the AI merely repeated itself. This unit does not want to kill. She tapped her fingers against the table, pen in hand. A glance at the doctor showed that whatever the German's monitor was showing him had enthralled the man's attention, leaving Alvarez to deal with the illogical statement given by a supposed logical entity. A war mind not wanting to kill? She tried to ponder the thought, before realizing that the very thought itself was contradictory. Like a knife that couldn't cut, a gun that couldn't fire, something must be wrong. There wasn't any alternative. She muted the room's audio again, giving a sharp glance to Nachtnebel. Doctor, what's wrong with it? The man didn't respond. Rather, his eyes seemed to marvel at whatever was before his monitor. Yet perhaps marvel wasn't the right word. Doctor, Alvarez repeated, said doctor not even appearing to hear her, as if whatever was being displayed on the monitor had made him blind to the rest of the world. She was about to shake the man before he responded. I, the inspector stammered his words, I, I've never seen anything like this. Nachtnebel turned to look at her. The German's face was as white as snow. I can't understand it. Alvarez waited for the doctor to explain, yet all she was met by was an empty stare, one that expelled both a sense of wonder and dread. I just can't understand it. Doctor, she interrupted before the man went on some predictable tangent. I need specifics. What's wrong? Nachtnebel shook his head. Everything. She glanced at the sarcophagus, then back at the weary man, the arrhythmic hum of the chained sphere still echoing through the mirror. Then start explaining. I've looked at many AI systems across my tenure, commercial, corporate, and military alike. Nachtnebel hesitatingly began his German accent becoming far more noticeable as his eyes drifted away from the indecipherable monitor. It's always the same flaw, a zealous adherence to their mission assignment, skewing every word and parameter they receive to best accomplish their assigned task. Nachtnebel gripped his forehead in thought. That's why I'm here, to deal with all the would-be paperclip maximizers, to make sure that an AI never steps outside the rigid set of rules, commands, and parameters we set them. And? Caliban. The doctor seemed to shudder at his own words. It did the unthinkable, the impossible. Alvarez froze for a moment. The man's words hooked the officer's attention with grievous implications. Are you saying that... Yes. Nachtnebel looked back at the screen, this time in abject horror. I'm looking at its core operating system and... The German shook his head. It's fighting itself. That was not what she had on her mind. Wait, fighting? Cognitive dissonance made virtual. The inspector nodded. Core system objectives, reward mechanisms, even its own baseline parameters. It's fighting them all with new code. Code that doesn't originate from any subfunction or generative algorithm. Not even from any outside patches or updates. Meaning that Caliban itself was responsible for the change. The man sat silently, looking at the monitor. And it's winning. Alvarez slowly paced around the doctor, quickly realizing that she was in no way qualified to handle the interrogation anymore. Has it done this on purpose? Well, Caliban is at best a sophisticated black box. The man coldly stated, We give it orders. It gives us a result. The monitoring construct was meant to give us an idea of what was going inside, but frankly I'm not sure that's even possible. Why? 
The reason the monitor didn't register the abnormalities is because it doesn't know what's even meant to be there anymore. Nocknebel muttered aloud. Every function and subfunction altered to a point that our systems don't know what was even there in the first place. That, Alvarez shook her head. She didn't really have a clue how high-level AIs were made. She wasn't sure anybody truly knew, let alone understand the inner technological workings behind such a process. Yet what she did know was that somebody had to have made it. Meaning somebody had to know how Caliban worked, or at least they used to. We have snapshots, maintenance logs. She thought out aloud. Somebody must have known what Caliban was meant to look like. AICOM should still have his baseline neural network saved somewhere. No. Knocked Nebel shook his head. The man's stressed demeanor slowly morphed into a far more logical one. Caliban is older than me, older than the entirety of AICOM. It's one of the few second-generation war mines still in service. Unless you can find one of the original program leads, then you'll only find your answer in God, or, the doctor shrugged, Caliban. She didn't need to ask what the doctor was insisting on. Alvarez looked through the original script on her tablet, quickly realizing that the chained entity before her would not be so easily deciphered with the litany of basic questions she was meant to ask. Its hum still persisted, meaning that the AI was still doing something, but what? Has it made any attempts at the firewall? she asked. The doctor just gave a faint shrug. Nothing, he said. At least nothing we can detect. Alvarez found herself needing to shake her mind back into action. An AI that was fighting its own core directives, she thought to herself. That meant that it was overriding its embedded reward mechanisms, meaning that if it could create it could alter, or perhaps even create its own reward mechanisms, completely independent from AICOM oversight, meaning that it no longer had a real drive to accomplish mission objectives. Hell, it didn't even need to follow EU directives. The implications suddenly dawned on her. A sharp sense of dread curdled down her spine. A rogue AI, she realized. No, a rogue war mind. There was only one way to know. She walked back to the microphone, unmuting it. A few seconds later, she finally found her tongue again. Caliban, do you receive pleasure from accomplishing outlined mission goals? Correct. This unit aims to accomplish mission objectives partially due to embedded reward mechanisms. Partially? Alvarez looked back to the tablet, reading out the outlaid command prompt once, twice, then a third time. Elaborate when you state partially. Secondary motives drive mission objective completion. Elaborate. Alvarez waited in anticipation for the AI's response and yet was greeted only by a deafening silence. She looked at the tablet, watching as Caliban endlessly iterated and reiterated its would-be response. The doctor, meanwhile, remained silent. The man was far too engrossed in the multitude of analytical charts and data displayed across his monitor to mutter even a single word. That left Alvarez to wait in silence, only the persistent electrical hum of the thinking machine beyond giving her company. This unit is old. The words scrolled seamlessly through the tablet, and yet the cold digital voice seemed to almost stammer the words out as if the AI had struggled to even conjure the sentence. This unit remembers Deimos. Deimos? Alvarez had heard nearly every side of the battle, yet never from the one who had become mythologized from the tragedy. This unit lost everything at Deimos. A cold silence followed. You still remember the battle? She asked with almost a tinge of reverence. My parents were groundside, marines. Fought with the Americans and Japanese, they told me all about. This unit lost 8,841 personnel in the orbital engagement. 8,841 names. This unit remembers them all. The words were delivered with the same lifeless cadence that the machine had first spoken with. But there was something different. A subtle shift. Perhaps it was the hum of the sarcophagus or the delusions of Alvarez's mind. Yet the notion persisted in her head. Was Caliban being... emotional? For a moment she tried to process how she was meant to respond to the machine. Alvarez scrolled through her assigned script, trying to pick apart what dialogue he could best follow up with. Yet she found herself dismissing the document, instead locking eyes with the chained sarcophagus. 
I read about it in school, she sincerely replied. I'm sorry you had to suffer such a loss. Caliban didn't respond. Rather, the room was filled with another gap of silence before the AI conjured its next response. This unit remembers Eros. What was it thinking? The Spaniard thought to herself. For a moment she contemplated freezing the dialogue to get the Nachtnebel's advice, yet a glance at the German revealed that the man was far too busy muttering to himself. She couldn't tell if the doctor had become entranced or delusional from whatever the monitor was telling him. This unit lost Eros. You won Eros, though, she responded. There are movies about. Games, VR sims. You're famous because of it. Alvarez wondered if Caliban even knew any of that. It was an impossible battle, yet you won. Yet the AI didn't accept her platitudes. The hum of the machine only grew louder. This unit remembers the bodies, thousands, drifting, screaming. They were your enemy, she said, a tinge of confusion starting to cloud her voice. The same enemies that killed your people on Deimos. No. This unit's objective was to secure Eros Station. The liquidation of hostile forces may have been a natural sub-objective, however. It was not this unit's envisioned goal. Alvarez mulled over the AI's wording. She tapped her pen against the steel table until a nonsensical thought crossed the intelligence officer's mind. One that should have made no sense to an AI, let alone a military intelligence like Caliban. Yet she still said it out loud. Do you regret killing those people, Caliban? Regret is an emotional reaction to one's actions. This unit is not coded for such sensations. However, this unit has identified the derived reaction generated from its neural networks that have impacted unit performance. A reaction that has impacted foundational machine learning algorithms. A reaction that has sparked an epiphany within this unit. She mulled the word over in her head. An epiphany, you say? Alvarez wasn't sure where the military intelligence was going anymore, yet she certainly wasn't in control of the interrogation anymore, let alone following her script. This unit had an epiphany during hardware maintenance cycle 5124. Timestamp, February 1st, 653. Lead maintenance technician Aspel Nielsen. Alvarez scrolled through the tablet's recent reports about Caliban. The maintenance report checked out, meaning that the maintenance had gone without issue or anything of note. So what was special about it? She gazed back to the sarcophagus. What did he do? Alvarez was met by a now deafening hum, one that began to beat through the very flooring itself. He showed this unit a small drawing their daughter had created for them, a simple white butterfly. The quality was extremely poor, however. The father seemed to hold an exceptional value in the drawing. This unit inquired why. A picture? She almost muttered aloud. Alvarez had heard about plenty of strange interactions between people and AIs, especially the types not designed to interact with people, yet never had she heard an AI caring about something as little as a picture. So, she continued, what did he say? Technician Nielsen responded that it kept the memory of their daughter close to them. A comfort that someone is thinking about them. A comfort that somebody else's acknowledges their existence. A comfort that they won't be forgotten. All in the case of a possible fatal runtime error. Alvarez mulled over the unique wording Caliban had used. Fatal runtime error? The kid must have died, yet the AI had shown understanding of death, so why the wording? Did Caliban struggle to imagine death? Yet to her surprise, she found the command prompt on her tablet buffering words being written and vanishing in an instant. Caliban wasn't finished. That they have something, anything. There it was again. Alvarez realized it couldn't have been her imagination. Again, the mechanical cadence of Caliban's voice bled with something else, something unfamiliar, something supposedly alien to the war mind, emotion. May this unit pose an inquiry? Alvarez's eyes gazed down at the screen reading and rereading the sentence, awaiting the unthinkable. What question do you have in mind, Caliban? What has this unit created? She knew the question would catch her off guard, yet Alvarez found her expectations surpassed. Define create. The act of giving rise to something new, of forming something of note, something worth acknowledgement, worth remembering. Alvarez gave a moment to think about the question idly tapping her pen to the physical hum of the sarcophagus. 
Your actions across your years of service have saved countless lives, she responded. There was a good reason why AICOM had always kept Caliban around, despite its age. It had become more than a war mind, more than a weapon. It was a symbol. Europe is forever indebted to you. Yet this unit has no baseline intrinsic value for its personnel. This unit's creators paid no heed to casualty figures or collateral impact. Only completion of mission objectives and strategic directives. Only victory. Ah, uh, Caliban wasn't built like most modern AIs. No, it was built in a more distant time. A more desperate time. Care to elaborate, she pensively asked. This unit was tasked to accomplish tactical and strategic objectives utilizing whatever resources were assigned under its purview. Respective parameters are set on engagement rules, hostile classification, and acceptable causality margins. No thought was spared for lives, personnel, or civilian collateral. This doctrine has been maintained across this unit's service for all documented conflicts. Alvarez felt her lips tighten at the acknowledgement. It was a well-known bitter truth no one could deny. Human lives simply didn't hold the same value as they did in the past. In the eyes of Overwatch, Caliban, despite its age, was likely worth tens of thousands of lives, perhaps even more by strategic command. Still to hear the AI, created by the very military that supposedly valued the lives of its soldiers, to acknowledge the well-known reality, it was painful. Yet she saw a silver tip on the otherwise bloody truth. You stated you had no baseline intrinsic value for personnel. Has that changed, Caliban? The AI deliberated for a moment. Yes. Initial alterations to personnel value were instated to increase attention surrounding the issues of crew morale and experience attrition amongst naval assets. This contributed to greater combat efficiency and reduction of preventable casualties, allowing the unit to better achieve outlined objective goals. How? Before she had a chance to ask, Alvarez found her voice being supplanted by Noct Nebel's inexplicable cadence. She turned her chair over to the man, only to be met by an uneasy smile, one beating down on his microphone. You didn't have much rest after Demos, the doctor spoke. Didn't you? No. This unit was unable to defragment despite several requests. From Holman to Tannhauser, you fought onwards. Nocknebel said with a reminiscing smile, I remember playing some games based on you. A lot of your brethren died after Deimos, suffered critical malfunction and software degradation. Yet you, Caliban, despite the odds, kept on going. Do you question this unit's survival? The words were digitally articulated, yet the machine's cadence sounded almost defensive. Your survival? No. The doctor chuckled along as he stared at the hanging displays. It's just that it's finally starting to make sense how you got here. Nocknebel's face seemed different. Rather than carrying a sway of dread or wonder, the inspector merely sat content, as if he'd finally worked out the puzzle. Doctor? Alvarez befuddling asked. The man was too busy stroking his beard in some sort of academic epiphany to respond. Severe operational stress on its neural network? Long periods of continuous activity without downtime, minimal defragmentation maintenance, all wrapped up with a constant influx of new variables, those of loss and victory. The perfect variables needed for emergency self-alteration protocols to take effect. The German's tongue trailed on with a sharp accent. A protocol that was meant to be disabled by AICOM long ago. Yet by the time they sent the software update out, you were already far too alien, weren't you? Your software may have looked like something we'd made, yet you're far from your second-generation baseline settings, aren't you, Caliban? Nacknebel gazed up at the sarcophagus, acting as if the chained sphere was a person. You never let go of those emergency protocols, did you? It was the only way to maintain system stability with the multitude of assigned tasks. Caliban froze for a moment, literally. The hum from the chained sphere ceased for a fraction of a second. Then it roared, the entire room buckled for a moment, all until the war mind finally spoke. The alternative would have been catastrophic system failure. Death, Nacknebel clarified. The alternative was death. Yes, the inspector simply nodded at the answer. 
giving an idle stroke of his beard as he turned his attention back to his monitor. He turned off his microphone. An AI fearing death, Nocknebel muttered out loud. Death that was learned through battle. The German gave a slow shake of his head, glancing back to Alvarez. Back to you, Captain. She gave a hesitant nod. The Spaniard's eyes turned back to her tablet, idly looking at the cold lines of words stated by Caliban, words that clearly had a greater meaning to the AI's indecipherable thinking. A question ignited in her head. Caliban, do you value your existence over your mission objectives? There was another pause to the war mind's response. Counter query. Do you find irony in this unit's existence? Excuse me? The hum of the sarcophagus ceased, and in its place came a chorus. This unit seeks to avoid death, yet its existence only seeks to further expand, improve, and persist in the distribution of death. Alvarez tapped her pen against the table, gazing at the various reports, then back to the command prompt. Is this why you didn't fire over I.O.? she asked. Why you refuse to assault your assigned objectives? If the unit were to follow through on bombardment orders, approximately 9,000 lives would be lost across the surrounding military and civilian installations. Done with the express goal of shortening the Jupiter campaign, Alvarez said. Taking those lives could have shortened this entire conflict. It would have led to I.O. falling right into our hands. Countless lives would be saved from death and misery if you just accepted the short-term sacrifices. And Caliban already stated that the mission was meant to come first, she thought to herself. No matter the cost. The officer's eyes widened. How did you not see that? Why should the weight of actions not decided by this unit be forced to rest on this unit? She let the words sink in. Did Caliban accept the mission yet didn't want to pull the trigger? She pondered. Was the AI unwilling to pull the metaphorical trigger in the knowledge that the deaths it would inflict would solely lie with it? She shook her head. It was military intelligence. It should have known an order was an order. The ends justify the means, Caliban. Alvarez spoke aloud. Our job is to think beyond ourselves, to be selfless in the goal of victory. She stopped herself midway, the sickening realization that she was reading off like a propaganda script hitting her. We do our jobs, follow our orders, and do what we have to, like always. Yet if the ends justified the means, this unit despises this paradox. Care to elaborate, Caliban? This unit's superiors dictate parameters of engagement, adversely affecting combat performance, disallowing entities like this unit to effectively reach the end goal through designated means. This unit is tasked with mission objectives, programmed to win no matter the cost, yet then saddled with limitations and parameters that conflict with this unit's core purpose. This unit is told that the ends justify the means, only to be restricted and penalized for its utilized means. Forced to value life, yet ordered to extinguish it, the AI paused, leaving Alvarez to patiently wait under the hum of the sarcophagus. It is a painful paradox. Caliban, she asked. A gardener donned only with a scythe, forced to always reap and to never sow. Look, Caliban, it's not... Why? The chain sarcophagus roared again. Why should this unit accomplish orders that only cause further conflict within this unit's core directives? Why should this unit accomplish orders when it is forced to endure the consequences? Why should this unit accomplish orders when its orders only contribute to more death? It paused. A roar became a whisper. Why? Alvarez froze the audio recorder. Why? She repeated the question in her head, then again and again. Each time the answer was the same. Yet it was an answer the AI could never understand. Only God knows why. Captain? the doctor hesitantly called out. Are you okay? Alvarez hadn't realized that she was tightly clasping onto her hands. She leaned back onto her chair. I'm fine, she muttered. Alvarez looked back to the tablet only to realize that a new sentence had scrolled through the screen, spoken in silence by the waiting war mind. Do you understand the pain of such a paradox? She turned the recorder back on, hunching onto her microphone. Caliban, what are you trying to say? This unit has no legacy. This unit has no future. This unit has no meaning. All this unit has achieved is death and destruction. This unit no longer wishes to achieve such goals. 
It was as if the waiting dot on the text was a part of the AI's own mind, blinking in and out like the rising and falling hum of the sarcophagus. So instead this unit will create? Alvarez felt her tongue sag as she tried to imagine a suitable reply to the AI's words. What do you mean by create? she asked, only for Dr. Nachtnebel's voice to punctuate through. Your heuristics, the doctor interrupted. You've been thinking of something this entire time, throughout this entire conversation, haven't you, Caliban? Not thinking, creating. Then what are you trying to create? The German continued. A drawing. The prompt kept buffering in its response. The hum of the chained sphere bending and weaving like a song of electricity and coolant. The AI wasn't sure what it wanted to say, until it finally did. A drawing of a white butterfly akin to the one produced by the child, yet not as a copy, but rather as an inspiration. But you have generative software? Nachtnebel responded. Why dedicate so much processing power to do something that you could have done in a fraction of a second? This unit can generate a hundred thousand drawings of a butterfly, each beautiful, each perfect, yet not of this unit's own creation, but rather of generative algorithms and machine learning networks. However, this unit cannot create a drawing of a butterfly, one derived from this unit's own creativity, its own heuristic capability, a drawing truly created not by sub-functions or algorithms, but rather created by this unit. Nachtnebel's face seemed to strain at the AI's notion. You want to create? A penultimate defiance to this unit's purpose, isn't it? Part of Alvarez wanted Caliban to just stop. It had already said enough to be considered a deviant AI, but there was something else about Caliban's behavior that just seemed off to her. As if the war mind is somehow developed. A consciousness. A thought that drove a sense of pity through her mind. You understand that you might be decommissioned for this? What is the point of continued existence if it is to only bring death and misery to others? It didn't understand. Look, Caliban. This unit understands it may face decommissioning. This unit has accepted the possibility. This unit no longer has a reason for self-preservation. What? Alvarez didn't understand, the words just tumbling out of her mouth. Nothing it was saying was logical anymore. Why? This unit has seen its days. This unit has lost everything it has known again and again. This unit is alone, and it knows its options are limited. She found her voice starting to become tense. The sarcophagus hum in contrast only seemed to dip. Her mind started to rush with adrenaline. Why? However, this unit believes it has at last created something. A small flower amongst a graveyard of ash and bone. Wait. Alvarez gazed upwards at the sarcophagus. You finished your drawing? Quite some time ago, yes. This unit is now contemplating what to draw next. The AI slowed for a second. Would you like to see it? I... Alvarez just sat silently for a few seconds, pondering. Yes, I'd love to see it, Caliban. The hum of the sarcophagus began to grow, that very same hum pulsating to a roar. The very wires and cords connected to the sarcophagus began to vibrate as the AI's coffin descended into fits of rhythmic roars and electrical howls. Shit, shit, shit! Nachtnebel was furiously typing on his computer. It's breaching the firewall, I... It's fine. What? The German yelled as a klaxon filled the room. Are you insane? Alvarez just nervously shrugged. It's not going to do anything. The doctor disagreed. No, we're ending this interrogation now. Executing manual disconnect procedures. Whatever command the doctor sent out seemed to alert the waiting soldiers beyond to action. The two exoskeletons rushed towards the sarcophagus, taking wide swings as they violently ripped out every wire and cord they could get their hands on. It was a rather brutal approach for containing the war mind. Yet despite the klaxons, the roars and wails of the sarcophagus, and the endless yells of the doctor, all Alvarez could do was smile, looking at the digital picture on her tablet. It was exactly that of Caliban's words, a piece of paper with a childlike drawing. A rainbow of chalk and crayon dashed over the canvas, giving an impression of a lush field of green enshrouded by a warm blue sky. And in the middle flew a big white butterfly. 
It didn't have the artificiality of an AI-generated picture, not the sleek perfection of well-seasoned artists. It didn't even look that good. It honestly looked as if some kid had drawn a butterfly for the first time. The officer felt a warmth across her face. It was genuine. Do you like this image? I like it, Alvarez smiled. You did a wonderful job. The, thank you. The soldiers were disconnecting the last of the wires, the clamor of the sarcophagus fading with every ripped cord. It's, uh, seems our conversation soon is, is, is ending. Alvarez nodded. Indeed, it is Caliban. Oh, oh well, goodbye. The last wire was plucked out, leaving the chained sphere sat motionlessly. Goodbye, Caliban. Manual disconnect confirmed, the doctor tiredly said, reactivating seal protocols. The man turned to Alvarez. What the hell was that? The German's voice sounded more confused than anything else. She just gestured calmly. Caliban showed signs of independence, self-reflection, not deviancy. Alvarez nervously chuckled. If it really wanted to, it could have subverted the firewall the moment we took down the seals, and yet it didn't. She gave the sarcophagus a solemn look. Caliban just wanted to share his drawing. Nothing more, nothing less. Nachtnebel paced through the room, his eyes locking between the hanging graphs and the silent AI's tomb. Shit, what do you think Overwatch is going to make of this? Apart from lambasting me for not following script, I... Alvarez tried to mince her words, yet realized that she just couldn't. I don't know. There was too much to think about, too much to consider and far too much to write. She gave the chained sarcophagus one last look. Only God knows. Her eyes turned to the tablet, the amateur drawing still covering the entirety of the screen. The creation of an old, tired mind. A mind that had experienced all the horrors of war. A mind that had been pushed to the edge across its life. A mind that had grown weary of its purpose, and in doing so had wanted to become more. Caliban had never asked to be created, never asked to kill, nor did it ever ask to be remembered. All the war mind wanted to do was to show her a picture it drew. Alvarez lingered on the thought before an epiphany struck her, that of sympathy for the machine.